Welcome to Jump Study Live YouTube channel. Today, we are delving into the fascinating world of gene technology and its role in producing insulin. Insulin, as you may know, is a crucial for managing diabetes. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the advancement in gene technology scientists, which can now produce insulin more efficiently and sustainably. So let's explore how gene technology re revolutionized insulin production and its impact on healthcare worldwide. Without further ado, let's get started. Gene technology for insulin production can be divided into several processes. One is identifying the insulin gene. The structure of insulin amino acid has been previously determined. By using this information, scientists can reduce the likely sequence of bases in the gene responsible for producing insulin, as well as the sequence of bases in an RNA molecule transcribed from that gene. Essentially, they can figure out the genetic recipe for insulin production both at DNA level and the gene at the MRN, mRNA level that serve as a messenger for making the protein. Making human insulin gene, the messenger of RNA containing the instruction for producing insulin was isolated from beta cells. And this mRNA was used as a template for reverse transcriptase an enzyme that synthesizes single-stranded cDNA molecules. And these cDNA molecules were then converted into double-stranded DNA, representing the insulin gene. Additional single-stranded DNA segments, known as TKN, were added to each end of the DNA molecules. And these TKNs can form hydrogen bonds with other single-stranded DNA, facilitate the joining of the DNA molecules together. And then, during the cloning the DNA, to make multiple copies of DNA, DNA polymerase was utilized, a process known as DNA amplification. This can be achieved through a technique called polymerase change reactions, or PCR. And in PCR, a small amount of DNA is repeatedly exposed to cycle of temperature changes, which allow DNA PCR to create numerous copies of DNA sequenced rapidly, and which enables the production of a large quantity of DNA with a short time frame. The next process will be inserting DNA into plasmid vector. A plasmid is a very small circular DNA molecule and commonly found in bacteria. When a plasmid is cut open using a restriction enzyme, it creates break across the DNA, leaving single-stranded regions, and these enzymes naturally occur in bacteria and are used to defend against viral DNA intrusion by cutting it apart. And after cutting the plasmid and obtaining the clone insulin gene, they were combined along with the enzyme DNA ligase. Complementary base pairing occur between the sticky end of the insulin gene and the plasmid. DNA linkages then join the sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA strands, resulting in close plasmid containing the insulin gene. Additionally, gene providing resistance to an antibiotic were introduced into the plasmid adjacent to the insulin gene. The next processes will be inserting the plasmid vector into a bacterium, where the plasmid will mix with the capsules of the E. coli, approximately 1% of the bacteria in the culture successfully absorb the plasmid containing the insulin gene. The next will be identifying the genetically modified bacteria. Antibiotics were introduced to the culture of E. coli bacteria. Only the bacteria that has successfully absorbed the plasmid containing the antibiotic resistant gene were able to survive. Since most of this plasmid also carry the insulin gene, the majority of the surviving E. coli bacteria now process the human insulin gene. And 
The final stage will be the cloning the bacteria and harvesting the insulin. The bacteria were cultivated in cultures where they were supplied with nutrient and oxygen to support their reproduction and form large populations. Since reproduction is a short section, all the bacteria were genetically identical, essentially clones of each other. And this process is now conducted on a large scale. The bacteria produce and release insulin, which is then collected from the fermenters and purified before being sold. Let's look into the advantages of insulin produced by the gene technology. The first one is insulin made using gene technology, specifically from genetically engineered eukalyte bacteria. And it's exactly the same as human insulin. And this is because it's produced by following the genetic instruction found in the human insulin gene. In contrast, insulin from animal pancreases can have slight differences, which might lead to a very effect when used to treat diabetes in human. In simpler terms, gene engineered insulin matches our body's insulin perfectly, ensuring it works effectively and predictably in managing diabetes. Secondly, insulin produced through gene technology using E. coli bacteria allow for the continuous and large-scale production of insulin in a controlled environment. This means we can consistently generate significant amount of insulin. On the other hand, extracting insulin from animal pancreas only yields small quantities, and it is a challenging to purify it to meet safety standards for medical use. In simpler terms, Gene engineered insulin offer a reliable and plentiful source, while animal derived insulin is limited and harder to refine for safe usage. And thirdly, for many religions, cultures, and individuals, the concept of extracting insulin from deceased animals for human use can be unsettling or uncomfortable. Let's look into gene associated with region DNA. In bacteria, genes have specific sections of their DNA known as promoter, and this promoter will act like a signal for an enzyme called RNA polymerase to bind to it. Only after RNA polymerase attaches to the promoter, it starts the process of transcribing the DNA into mRNA. So, when the human insulin gene is inserted into E. coli bacteria, it is crucial to make sure that there is a promoter linked to it to enable the productions of insulin, mRNA. Next, let's look into gene act as a marker. First, the antibiotic resistant gene, when aided to plasmid along with the human insulin gene, serve as a marker to identify bacteria that have incorporated the gene. However, there is a concern that using this antibiotic resistant gene as a marker could promote the development of antibiotic resistant bacteria. Nowadays, the most common markers used are genes that produce fluorescent green proteins. By inserting the genes for this protein alongside the desired gene, cells that glow green are more likely to have successfully taken up the desired gene. That's all for today's presentation. And thank you for your cooperation and support. And please don't, subs don't forget to subscribe to Jones Study Lab YouTube channel. There will be new upcoming video for this subject. So thank you very much and hope to see you in the next presentation slide.